and thank you for joining the demonstration of EMC's well-run hybrid cloud. For those of you that attended EMC World this year, you actually saw us develop a cloud from pallet to provisioning in less than six hours. First, I want to actually start off by showing the tool itself, and then ultimately we'll end with the tool sets that are being leveraged to produce the result that we're seeing in the well-run hybrid cloud. In this case, we're using VMware's vCloud Automation Center, or VCAC, as the initial login screen. In this instance, I'm logging in as an end user with my username and password, and then ultimately authenticating through VCAC. At this point, I can see a number of services, applications, infrastructure, and storage services that are available to me. As I click through the service catalog that has been created in this instance, I can see everything from Exchange, Oracle, in some cases, big data elements like Hadoop, and even things like integration at the application level with SAP. Obviously, your service catalog would be customized to your given environmental needs. And in this case, uh, we built some standard services that we think are applicable, including even Simplicity file storage for sync and share. Ultimately, your service catalog will meet the needs of your particular organization. I'll use an example here of when I click on infrastructure, you can see the three options that are available to me in this particular service catalog. In this case, I want a Windows 2008 virtual machine. As I go through the catalog, I can see a standard virtual machine here of CPU, memory, storage, and even costing. What I'm doing here is essentially taking the service catalog that was built for a standard virtual machine, aligning some standard features and capabilities, both CPU, memory, and storage, and I'm using ITBM, or Information Technology Business Management Tool from VMware, to align costing on a per-day standpoint. Financially transparent and very clear catalog of services. From there, I'll be able to actually customize what I put in my catalog. In this case, I may want additional CPU. I may also want to include a backup service level as well. In this case, I want daily backups for one year. I can go down to the storage tab and I can make adjustments there as well. I may want to edit this from tier two storage to something more available, right? Or highly available in a tier one storage instance. At that point, I can submit the request and the request will actually now flow through a automation and orchestration layer also being provided from VMware to generate that request. As I click over to the items tab, I can see the virtual machine actually being built. I have full transparency to the cost and how long it's taking to actually build this. In this case, I can actually get a status report of when my backups are occurring, and I can decide who I'd like to know, whether in that application owner, executive, or administrator, on when backups are completing successfully or not. I can also go through a restore request. Let's say I, as a user, am in here and I need to restore a work set from some issue that I had, I can type in restore from a previous VM, and I can actually then see my backup service catalog, pick the restore date I want, submit the request, and again, through automation and orchestration, that restore request is submitted. At this point, I may also want to make some edits here in some other categories, like an on-demand backup. Maybe I'm about to do a software update or some type of code level change or revision. I may want to do a backup that's off my typical rotation. As an end user, I can log in and I can certainly submit that backup request to occur and that request is going to take place. Let's say time goes on and my requirements change and I want to go in and edit the capabilities of my virtual machine. In this case, let's say I want some additional CPU for some more high performance scenarios I'm trying to run, some additional memory, and all I do is literally edit those on the fly. Again, the orchestration and automation and underlying hardware takes place, and I can go through and create that reconfiguration. You'll see me refresh the data, and all of a sudden, on the fly, I have made those edits. And obviously, my cost has changed. As I go on here, you can see I can do this in some other instances. In this case, I have an Oracle Rack instance in Boston. I want to provision some additional Oracle instances. I'll provide my passwords, and there I'll have my Oracle instance implemented in Boston, and I can go and I can do the same thing in New York. Again, I'm doing this as an end user. 
we're not having to necessarily communicate with IT on the tasks that I want to create. Again, these are standard level tasks that have made it into my service catalog. This demo goes on and actually can show a number of other capabilities. Um, in some instances, I may actually log in as a developer and I may get a different set of services. We can do this in fo further follow-up demos on how different uses and views may look from other folks. What I ultimately want to do is spend a quick moment talking about the underlying tools that make up this demonstration. As you can see, the interface I was in was vCloud Automation Center, or VCAC, which ultimately is the end user portal or front end of this solution. I had mentioned ITBM, which essentially we were using as the tool to show chargeback and costing, and I can create different login identifications, whether I'm an administrator, an end user, a developer, and I can make edits to my service catalog and what I can see or not see from a financial transparency standpoint based on who I am and how I logged in. Ultimately, the underlying elements of this are software-defined compute and software-defined network. We use a very common method here of software-defined compute with VMware vSphere and also the changing landscape of software-defined networking, in this case with VMware NSX. One topic we haven't necessarily spent a lot of time talking about is how I create software-defined storage, and that ultimately is provided through EMC's Viper capability. As you can see here, similar to how I've uh, decoupled the compute hardware from its software, vSphere, and network hardware from its network software-defined layer in NSX, I do something very similar in the Viper environment with block and file services. Now, in this case, with VNX or VMAX, I can also provision and manage, so again, control plane for management and data plane for movement, both EMC and non-EMC arrays. As you can see, this can easily address my second platform apps, which were demonstrated in the demo I just showed. Uh, in that case, I provisioned a Windows server and also some Oracle instances. But when you really think about how else we can integrate the service catalog, we look at this collection of third platform applications, big data applications that may have different use cases. And in this case, I may want to provide different storage services. In the old world, I'd have to go and provision new arrays and new storage services and drive complexity into my environment. But with software-defined storage, I can integrate, for example, scale-out flash for high-performance applications using Extreme I.O. I may use Isilon for scale-out NAS or HDFS data stores to go do Hadoop workloads. In some cases, I might want to use third-party uh, hardware and put Scale.io to aggregate compute, server, and network resources with one EMC piece of software and provision that up through Viper. Or I may want to use third-party hardware, whether that was third-party hardware that a customer supplied or EMC's ECS solution or Elastic Cloud Service. Either way, this solution allows you to address both second platform and third platform applications with software-defined storage and leveraging that orchestration and automation layer that comes from VMware. The great part about this as well is right in my service catalog, I can put workloads on-site or off-site. So for example, I might want a uh, Pivotal One uh, instance on a VMware public cloud to do Cloud Foundry application development. Once I do some testing off-prem in VCHS, or VMware Cloud Hybrid Services, I may want to pull that back onto my private cloud and put that into production. No problem with this solution as I've got interoperability between my software-defined compute in VCHS and my software-defined data center in my well-run hybrid cloud. We also have a number of service providers in the EMC network and VMware network that we can aggregate into and out of. Obviously, with this being a software-defined data center, I also support OpenStack and Hyper-V in addition to VMware. And we showed in the demo integrated provisioning, backup, DR, high availability, and security by integrating things like Avamar, Data Domain, RecoverPoint, VPlex, and RSA. So ultimately, this is a really well-run hybrid cloud, and you can see how it helps address second platform and third platform needs both on-prem and off-prem with software-defined compute, network, and storage, creating the ultimate flexibility in today's dynamic and changing IT environment. I hope this was an informative demo. For more information, please follow up with your EMC account executive. Thank you. Bye-bye.